Well, greetings, Pastor Eric from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful, snowy Redmond again. Good to be with you on day 19. Day 19. Um, after tomorrow, we end tomorrow with our 20-day study of Colossians. And uh, what we're going to do is take a little break from the daily videos or five days a week videos. And um, right before Ash Wednesday, I will send you a prayer journal, 40-day prayer journal, kind of like we did a gratitude journal. We did a joy journal. Now we're going to do a prayer journal during Lent. And each day will be something for you to read through, Bible verse, thought on prayer, write a prayer insight at the bottom, just kind of what you're, what you're um, learning or discerning about the importance of the power of prayer. We'll do that during Lent. Um, that will be something for you to do at home if you are on our Zion e-news list, but you're not uh, receiving our mailings of the Herald or whatever that might be, email me with your address and I will send you uh, a prayer journal. Now, during the Sundays in Lent, what we're going to look at is the powerful prayers of the Bible. We're going to walk through um, five, six prayers in the Old Testament and New Testament, powerful prayers of Moses and David and uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Paul for the Ephesian believers. We're going to look at great prayers on the Sundays in Lent. And on Wednesdays, we're going to be looking at the people of the Passion, people around the cross, people who were there at the, at, the, at the death or trial of Jesus. That will be our Wednesdays. Our Sundays will be powerful prayers of the Bible. And then you'll have the prayer journal to work through. And on Mondays and Fridays, I will send you a prayer uh, blog like this and kind of refreshing you on a prayer journal, some extra insights on prayer during that season of Lent. And on Wednesdays, you'll be receiving an email from our Wednesday Lent service. On Sundays, you'll be receiving an email for our Sunday services. So during Lent, uh, you'll be getting a Wednesday, a Sunday, and a Monday and Friday related to the uh, prayer journal. So that's what's going to be happening as we go forward um, in this Time before we're able to get back together. Now today we're looking at chapter 4 verses 7 through 9. 7 through 9, then we end tomorrow. Let me read those verses 7 through 9. This is kind of some of Paul's final greetings. He says, Tychicus, who carried the letter back, uh, will tell you all the news about you and me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you with the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your heart. He is coming with Onesimus. Remember we talked about the letter to Philemon, the runaway slave Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother who is one of you. They will tell everything that is happening here. Wonderful final words from, from Paul with this letter to the Colossians. And what's interesting is that Paul doesn't spend any time, we talked about yesterday, with his personal circumstances. He didn't tell them much how bad the food was or whether he had, uh, you know, all the different details about that or that he resented his imprisonment. He says he's imprisoned for the gospel, for sharing the mystery of Christ. Not any personal, um, situational, descriptions in the letter, but he left that to, he left those details of his personal circumstances to his two spiritual brothers, Tychicus and Onesimus, to share the burdens that Paul was going through with the church and in Colossae. Another wonderful ministry of speech, sharing the burdens of one another to bring to someone else to have them pray for um, the circumstances that you or Paul was going through. So remember that when Paul left Ephesus, he was accompanied by seven other believers. One of them was Tychicus. We read about that in Acts chapter 20. These men were helping Paul deliver the love offering from the Gentile churches to the poor saints in Judea 
and it's possible that uh, Tychicus and another guy, Tro, um, Phimius, were the two brethren Paul referred to in his second letter to the Corinthians. So Tychicus shared Paul's imprisonment and helped Paul, Tychicus, in many other ways. Paul chose Tychicus and Onesimus to deliver the letter to the Ephesians and the letter to the Colossians and the letter to Philemon, those three prison epistles. Paul instructed Tychicus to share with the Colossian Christians all the details of his situation there in Rome. So Paul's description of Tychicus reveals what a wonderful Christian Tychicus really was. He was a beloved brother, Paul calls Tychicus, willing to stay with Paul even through the difficult situation that Paul was in. How encouraging it is to have a Christian at your side when things are not only bad, but getting worse for Paul. Tychicus, Paul says, was also a faithful minister his love revealed itself in action. He ministered to Paul, and he also ministered for Paul in assisting Paul in witnessing to the Gentiles. Tychicus, Paul says, was a fellow servant. He was not an apostle, but he was a fellow servant, assisting Paul in Paul's apostolic ministry. Paul and Tychicus worked together in service for the Lord. Um, Paul also mentions Onesimus, we talked about him on Tuesday, calling him one of you who Tychicus, or Onesimus came from Colossae as a runaway slave from there, one of the many people who ministered to Paul during his time of imprisonment. So um, praying, proclaiming the word, witnessing, sharing burdens, wonderful <laughs> <clears throat> um, wonderful ministries of speech that Paul is talking about in the section we talked about yesterday and today. Um, it is something that Paul says, uh, kind of like from the prayer of David, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Paul wants to talk about the importance of speech and witnessing and of telling others of Jesus. Now, um, I'm going to put in the in the blog and an email a uh, an Amazon Prime movie, Paul Servant of Christ. If you have Amazon Prime, look it up because it's only an hour and twenty minutes or so, but it shows Paul in prison and Luke ministering to him. We'll talk about Luke tomorrow, who was also there with Paul, and it's a it's a, it's a wonderful movie that um, gets you into the feel for what was happening with Paul in prison. So um, maybe try to watch that this weekend, and um, I think that you will really enjoy it. So let's close in prayer. Dear God, thanks for the witness of words. Thanks for the witness toward Christ, which Paul was so um, passionately interested in. Let our words, let our deeds, let our speech all be witnesses to you. Let us be clear in who we are and what we are about as Christians who follow you. We thank you for this letter to the Colossians and we thank you for the insights we've received from it. We pray that you would continue to bless us and our community, our church, our nation. Keep us all under your care. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, day 20. And then we'll wrap up this wonderful letter to the Colossians. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.